everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I am a big fan of the Canon Vixia HD consumer cameras. In fact, they're so good, I use it here in my studio to record me. I didn't need to go buy some high-end camera for what I do. It was fine just uh, using some off-the-shelf Canon hardware. In fact, the camera I have is about five or six years old. Uh, but I wanted to see where Canon has taken their market to, and they uh, recently came out with the HFR50, the HFR52, and the HFR500. And all of these cameras are pretty much the same. There's some slight variations. Uh, the 50, which is this camera, has 8 gigabytes of onboard storage. The 52, which is the next one up from this one, is the same exact camera, just has 32 gigabytes of storage. Then there's the 500, which lacks the storage and also lacks the internal Wi-Fi that the camera has. And quite frankly, I don't think you're going to need the Wi-Fi, and I'll show you why in a minute. Let's step through the hardware first, because all of these cameras work pretty much the same. It has a 32x optical zoom, which I will demonstrate in a minute. Um, you don't have too much on the camera for buttons, because all of it is handled via the touchscreen on the camera. Uh, but you have a mic in port, which is an uh, a absolute necessity for me when I'm looking for cameras. So I'm glad it has that. You can plug an external mic in. Uh, you have AV out, so you can uh, either hook up headphones or uh, run video and audio out to an analog television. You have HDMI here, and we're um, currently hooking our camera up to our video system here in the studio. So we'll show you uh, some hands-on stuff with it in a minute. Uh, you also have a button here to go into playback mode. So if you don't want to futz around with the touchscreen, you can just hit this and immediately fire it off into playback mode. It has a memory card slot on board, so even if you have the internal memory, you still have the option to uh, use a card. And what's cool is that they uh, have the card going in at kind of an angle. It's like a little diagonal kind of thing, but the, the card mounts very nicely. It doesn't feel weird. It just goes right in and it uh, works nicely. And they did that, I think, to kind of make the camera slimmer overall. They've really uh, made these a lot lighter and a lot slimmer than the cameras I bought a couple of years ago. So I'm really uh, pleased with how it feels in the hand. Uh, you have your standard zoom control here, uh, and then of course the little hand strap to uh, hold on to the camera. It really feels nice. It's, it is very, very, very light, and I like that a lot. It's, they've really improved the, uh, the weight of the camera. Another thing they improved too is the battery life. So uh, right now I've been using this for a while today, but uh, when this was fully charged up, it, it's rated for about almost 100 minutes of usage, which is uh, almost, uh, you know, almost 30 or 40 percent longer than uh, the batteries that came with their cameras a few years ago. So that's actually pretty useful there. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, you have a couple of options for recording. It'll do AVC HD, but you can also uh, record into MPEG-4 format. So if you just wanted to grab files to pull off the, uh, the camera, you can do that as well. Uh, the camera records at 35 megabits per second at its highest setting. It'll also do 1080p at uh, 60 frames per second. So it's a, a pretty nice uh, frame rate. Uh, I like to shoot at 1080i, which is the next step down. Um, but you have uh, 1080p modes available on the camera, which uh, is pretty cool. So I'm going to step through a couple of the things that I noticed about the camera that were interesting. Uh, first thing we're going to look at is video quality. And I have a couple of shots I took around the house today. The, the colors are a little oversaturated. You can uh, put it into a number of different modes to uh, reduce that color saturation or adjust the look to your liking. Uh, the mode that I've settled into is uh, program mode or P mode, which gives me a little bit more control over the white balance and a few other things. So uh, that is pretty good. What I really like is the zoom on the camera. It's got a 32x zoom, op optical zoom, uh, which is nice. It's on par with the Sony offerings that are out there. Um, but what this does also, though, is it has another mode you can switch into uh, to basically get you into like an 1853 millimeter, 35 millimeter equivalent uh, zoom. So in other words, it's a pretty long zoom. I'm going to show you how that works because I think that uh, is rather interesting. So what we're going to do uh, is switch over to our camera's uh, display here. And I'm going to zoom in on my water heater as an example to show you what's going on. So this is the optical zoom. Now, it gets a little slowed down because of the low light conditions, and that's one area where these cameras just have not improved at all, which is the low light. They're still pretty grainy, and I was hoping that we would see uh, some, you know, some advancement in the low light capabilities. We're seeing a lot of that on the SLR side, but not uh, in these cameras. But what's, uh, what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to hit this uh, button here to get into one of the menus, and I can change the zoom type to 57x. And what this does is it's still optical. Um, but it gets you in closer. And I think it's kind of like what you see on some of these action cameras where you can adjust the, you know, maybe the, ha, where it's reading on the sensor or something like that. It does reduce your, um, your digital uh, uh, steady shot. So you can see it, it does a little bit better um, keeping my shot steady when I'm in the 32x mode. But uh, this is still an optical zoom and it looks really nice. So I think it's doing something with the sensor in that it's probably uh, adjusting the focal length on the sensor. I don't know what it's doing, but uh, it's doing something that <laughs> is making it work a lot better. So, uh, so it's pretty cool. You've got a nice, uh, nice deep zoom on this, and that's a really handy thing to have. And it's in good light. I think it's going to work really nicely. I have a shot here of my mailbox. Um, the focus was a little bit off, but you can see uh, how well that 
that Zoom does. Another feature that I like about it too is that it'll lock onto things when you want to focus. So uh, what we can do, let me switch back to my other camera here on my desk. Um, I can pick something that I want to focus on and just tap it. And even if it's not a face, it will keep it in focus. So we'll, we'll just maybe tap on our uh, Canon camera here. And let me switch back to our other shot here. And you can see what it's doing is that it's keeping that crosshair on the camera. So it's, it's locked onto it and it knows that I want to keep focused on that and it'll maintain its uh, ability to, to kind of keep it focused there, which is pretty cool. So both the 52 and the 50 have a Wi-Fi feature that allows you to connect to the camera via your smartphone or tablet. And the problem is, as you can see here, as I turn the camera, nothing is happening on the screen. It's very delayed. Uh, so we've stopped moving the camera and we're still seeing the motion. Uh, so for streaming from your camera, it's certainly not all that useful because you're not seeing really anything in real time here. It's taking quite a while for it to come over. And you would think that this might be, you know, a, an issue related to interference or something like that. But, you know, look, these things are within inches of each other. We are directly connected to uh, the Wi-Fi on the camera. You can control it, of course. You can zoom in if you want. Um, again, it takes a while for the, the feedback from that, act, uh, from that command to come back to you, which is... Uh, not very good because you really don't know what's going on. Uh, you can also record directly onto the camcorder, which is useful to some degree. I mean, if you were operating this remotely, perhaps, and you had it fixed on something and you wanted to record it to the camera, you could certainly do that. Uh, you can connect to it over the internet, provided your, uh, your uh, router supports UPnP, but I usually leave that off of my router because of security concerns. But it is possible to reach the uh, camera from an external website or external uh, location. However, uh, it would have been nice if they allowed you to manually set this up so you can map a port uh, through your router versus relying on something insecure like UPnP. Uh, you can also record from the camera uh, to the iPad, but the, uh, the video really looks like garbage. Now, what's interesting is, is that it does come in uh, without any delays. Even though we're seeing delays right now as we're recording, uh, the video does come over without a hitch, and you can do uh, simultaneous camera and device recording at the same time. But uh, the video really looks lousy. And if you look at this clip I took of my dog earlier, you know, it's very, it's overly compressed. It's really not all that useful. I mean, if you really were kind of in a pinch and wanted to get something you could email out really quickly, you could probably make it work. But at the same token, you could shoot the video with your iPhone directly and get a better quality image out of it. So, uh, so you know, I don't think the Wi-Fi feature is is really all that useful as a selling point. And I also don't think it's worth the extra money to get the onboard storage, given how inexpensive SD cards are right now. So uh, if you really want my advice, I would say go with the HFR, uh, whatever it is, HR500, uh, not the 50 or the 52, uh, because you can buy a memory card for 20 or $30 or less uh, and have a lot more functionality and pay a lot less for the camera. I think the, uh, the 500 model starts at 299, which is a lot less than uh, this one, which I think is about $400, $100 more, uh, or the 52, which costs, I think, another $60 or $70. So save your money. Uh, go with the R500. And this is Lon Sybin with the latest Canon Vixia camcorders. Thanks for watching.